Hello, Year 3 and Year 4. Welcome to your uh, Tuesday reading session with me, Mr. Phillips. All the usual hashtags, hashtag Say Anne's Live and Twitter handles are all the same. Um, today, you'll notice it's slightly different. It didn't really work last week, did it, with uh, me holding my camera up to the tech. So today, we've got a lot more um, technological. You know, I'm trapped here. There's a bit of a delay at the moment, but it'll work itself out eventually. Um, I'm trapped here in this box, um, and all your work and things is going to appear over here. Um, that will include the text, and it'll include all your questions and things. I still want you to write stuff down. I still want you to have your notebook, like I've got my notebook. And we have everything split up into our four categories, don't we? Um, still have that. Um, and I would recommend as well that you still have the text with you as well, so you can be pausing and checking it. But I will be showing you on the screen as well. Just be aware that it might be a bit fuzzy on the screen, so it will probably, again, be a good idea. I'll put it in the description for you to get a, a copy of the text yourself. Um, because we're working a lot more efficiently now, the lessons will be more about 20-25 minutes, which is really good so it's not dragging on for too long, okay? So, first of all, da -da -da -da, this is the book that we're looking at today, How Art Works by Sarah Hull. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to predict. That's part one, isn't it? I predict that. What do you think this book is going to be about? Do you think it's a storybook? Or do you think it's an information book? If it's a storybook, what do you think the story is? If it's an information book, what do you think it's going to be about? Pause the video there and have a little go using the start of I predict that to tell me what you think this book is going to be about. Okay, so I'm going to show you my prediction so you know. Now, looking at this book title and the cover, I definitely think it's an information book. I, I don't think it's a storybook. When it's like, how do things work and stuff like that, it tends to be information telling you more about the subject. And it's obviously going to be about art, but I can see new art there. I can see old art. So maybe it's telling about art throughout history. So that's what my prediction is going to be. I predict that, um, watch now, very technical. Should be able to see my mouse as well, hopefully. I predict that. Um, this is an information book about art throughout history. And that's my prediction. I predict that this is an information book about art throughout history. I wonder if your prediction matched mine. It doesn't matter if it didn't. You could have something completely different. I don't know yet. We don't know who's going to be right or who's going to be wrong. It doesn't matter either way. Okay, now we've predicted, we need to read the text in order to see if our prediction was right. So let's swap our screen over to the book. So um, when you look at the book, there's quite a few stories, uh, quite a few stories, quite a few pages. Um, we're only going to look at this first one. Okay, just this one. How does art tell stories? That's going to be the page we're looking at today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in, read different bits. You can follow my mouse to see which bit I'm talking about, okay? Now, I'm going to disappear for a sec because you don't need to see my face for this bit. We need to be focusing on the book, don't we? So goodbye me for a bit. Okay, and let's zoom in. Now, it's a little bit fuzzy. It might be fuzzy on yours as well. But again, it might be really, really good to have your own version of the tech. So here we go. How does art tell stories? Art brings stories to life in all sorts of ways. It can capture the essence of a story in a single dramatic scene or show one unfold over several key moments. The Bayer Tapestry is an embroidered strip of fabric that narrates the events leading to the invasion of England by William the Conqueror in 1066. When it was made, tapestry wall hangings often decorated castles. But the Bayer Tapestry was no ordinary wall hanging. At about 70 metres, which is 230 feet long, and 50 centimetres or 20 inches high, it is the longest piece of embroidery in the world. The action is told in around 60 scenes. Each has a short Latin caption to explain what's going on. The story reads from left to right, rather like a modern day comic strip. They were learning about the Bayer Tapestry. 
Let's read this little information box up here. It says, many storytelling pictures are about myths or Bible stories, but real historical events can be um, shown as stories too. Let's read this bit down here. It took many people hundreds of hours to stitch all the characters. Um, let's keep going down, actually, about more about the Bay of Tapestry, shall we? It says, in the scene below, William's troops board ships that will take them to England. It says, we're carrying supplies to the ships. And here we've got actual pictures from the Bay of Tapestry. Detail from the Bay of Tapestry, unknown British artists before 10, um, I think that's 1082 there, a bit fuzzy for me. So that's who made it unknown British artists. We don't actually know who made the Bay of Tapestry and that's what this picture is. Should we keep going along and see the rest of the Bay of Tapestry? Obviously not the whole thing. Um, here it says, I'm William leading my troops to victory. So here there was a picture of William leading the troops into the battle. And then the scene changes, there's something down here going wrong. The Bay of Tapestry was probably made in England, but it's named after a cathedral in France where it was kept. And then up here we've got someone saying, I feel something sick. So that's all about the Bay of Tapestry. Let's go back up this page. The painting below is a scene from a Bible story about a king. Rather than paint the whole story, the artist shows just one tense moment. The king and his guests look on in shock as a hand appears from nowhere and writes a warning in Hebrew on the wall. It's all seen so close up, it's almost as if you're with the guests at the table. Then we've got a little bit of extra information about this one. This one here is called Beljahar's Feast. And it was made by someone called Rembrandti van Rijen, maybe? It's blurry and I can't pronounce it. In about 1636. Here it says the scene is full of movement. It's as if a film has been paused just as it gets the most exciting part. The king has got up in such a hurry that he's knocked over a goblet with his arm. You can see that's happening there. And you can see the liquid pouring out, can't you? And that is our whole text today. So our chapter is about how we can tell stories using art. And it compares it to like a modern day comic strip. We have Story of the Belvazar's Feast here and Bayer's Tapestry over here. OK, so that's our first little look at the text. If there's anything, hello again, if there's anything that you missed, or you weren't sure of, maybe pause the video and go back and have a little reread of the text, okay? Should we do some questions? No, let's not. Let's clarify first. So I've got these complicated words down the side here, which I've picked out from the text that I think maybe we need to talk about so we understand what they mean. So we've got essence, we've got embroidery, we've got tents, and we've got cathedral. Those are the four words that I've picked for us today. So first of all, essence. What does that mean? It says that you know storytelling is the or art is the essence of the tell. Oh, art can tell the essence of a story. I'm trying to remember what the quote was. Yeah, um, art can tell the essence of a story. And you might say, oh, this is the essence of the school or the essence of that person. What do you think an essence is? If you think you know, then you can pause the video here and write down your answer. If you're not sure, just stay with me now. So an essence is like in some ways we could talk about it being a spirit um you know if you've got if your essence is kind of like your conscience and your spirit um, if we're thinking more of objects or you know things that aren't alive it could be the core of them or the heart of them and i don't mean like pumping hearts like our hearts i mean you know the central working of it okay so it's the thing at the very core that gets it working the spirit the core the heart um, we might say that a head teacher is the essence of the school, yeah? Uh, we might say that the um, manager is the essence of the football team, it's the core, it's the heart, okay? If an essence is missing, then some, a big part of it, the core, is missing, okay? That's quite a complicated word because it can be used in lots of different contexts. Next one, embroidery. The Bayer Tapestry is the biggest example of embroidery that we have. From that part period of history. What do you think embroidery means? If you think you know, pause the video there and then come back to us in a second. Okay, so embroidery is essentially just um, an, a work of sewing, okay, some stitch work we'll call it. 
stitch work. Um, so for example, on my shirt here, this isn't printed on, this is sewn in to the shirt. It's all fabric in and, and stitch work. So in, this has been embroidered onto my polo shirt. Same with this logo as well. It's not printed on with plastic. It has been knitted and sewn into my shirt. So embroidery is the art of stitching, the art of sewing. And if it's the largest example of embroidery, the whole Bay of Tapestry of this kind of material has all been stitched and hand sewn. That's what embroidery is. The next word is tense. It says that, that picture of the feast was showing one particular tense moment. What do you think tense means? If you think you know, pause the video there and then come back to us. So for this one, we don't mean tense as in what tense are you writing in? Are you work writing in past or present tense? We mean tense as in quite, you know, quite nerve wracking, quite panicky. If you're feeling quite tense, okay, you're feeling worked up and you're quite, you're, un, you're unnerved, you're nervous. Yeah, a tense moment when there's lots of atmosphere, okay? You might be tense when you're about to start a exam, for example, and you might be like, oh, I'm really nervous, I'm really, really tense, okay? So tense is like a nervous moment, okay? Next one is cathedral. A cathedral. What is a cathedral? It says that the Bay of Tapestry was named after the cathedral in France in which it was kept. But what is a cathedral? If you think you know, pause the video there and then come back to us. Okay, so a cathedral is a large church. A large church. Now, not any church can be a cathedral. It normally needs to have a bishop that sits within it. So only big cities have cathedrals, but it is a large church. OK, so we've had a little look at essence, embroidery, tents and cathedral. So those are the four new pieces of dialogue, dialogue vocabulary that we've looked at today. and We should hopefully know or be a bit more familiar with the meanings of those words now. So we predicted, we read the text and we've now clarified some of the vocabulary. Let's move on to the questions. I'm going to move myself a little bit out of the way, just so I'm not covering any of the questions. OK, so first of all, it says, how big is the Bayer Tapestry? How big is the Bayer Tapestry? OK, so if you've got the text in front of you, pause the video again. Go and see if you can find for me how big the Bayer Tapestry is. Write your answer down and then come, come back to us. OK, so how big? Now, I remember that this was in the introduction. So let me go back to my text. OK, so I'm going to be looking over here at my introduction. Da -da -da. I'm skimming and I'm scanning for lengths because I know my question is how long is it? I'm going to be looking for lengths like centimetres or metres or feet or inches or something like that. And I've spotted it here. But the Bayer Tapestry was no ordinary wall hanging. At about 70 metres long and 50 centimetres high. So there we go. There's the answer. 70 metres long and 50 centimetres high. Now it says how big is it? So I'm going to put both of those. I'm going to have 70 metres long and 50, oops, 50 centimetres high. So to give you a bit of an idea, you know, think about a 30 centimetre rule that we have in school. Yeah, so it's about that plus 20 centimetres high. It's not that big, you know, width-wise, but length-wise, it's 70 metres. I remember um, when I went to France with some year sixes a couple of years ago, uh, we went to go and see the Bayer Tapestry. And we had to walk into a room and went all the way down the room looking at it. And then we had to come all the way back on the other side. And we had to look at it on the other side. It had to be split into two parts of the room in order for us to be able to see it. And I don't even think we saw the whole thing either. It's massive. So how long, how big is the Bayer Tapestry? It's 70 metres long and 50 centimetres high. If you put the feet and inches down, that's fine as well. Ready for question two? The tapestry was sewn by one person over many years. True or false? So I've given you a statement there. I've said the tapestry was sewn by one person over many 
years. Is that true or is that false? Can you tell me why as well? How you know it's true or how you know it's false? Go back to the text, have a look. The tapestry was sewn by one person over many years. True or false? Okay, what do you think? So let's head back to the text and have a little look. So here we are. Now, here's where I think this information is. I've got pictures of people sewing it. So there's a little bit of information. It took many people hundreds of hours to stitch all the characters. It took many people hundreds of hours. So the statement is the tapestry was sewn by one person over many years. Well, it might have been over many years, but we know for a fact it was not one person. So that is false. And we know that because it was many people, not just one. That was a false statement, a bit of a tricky false statement. Ready for question three? Question three says, in the picture of Belzar's feast, what language is the warning written in? In the picture of Balthazar's feast, what language is the warning written in? So go back to your text, go and look at the bit that's talking about Balthazar's feast. Don't look at the, the Bayer tapestry bit now. Just look at the feast bit and find out what language was the warning written in. And then come back to me. Okay, so we're going to have a little look. Right, let's go back to our text. And I'm going to move myself out of the way over here because the bit about the feast is over this side, isn't it? This is all Bayer tapestry here and there, but that is the feast. So the painting below is a scene from a Bible story about a king. Rather than paint the whole story, the artist shows just one tense moment. We know tense means nervous now. The king and his guests look on in shock as a hand appears from nowhere and writes a warning in Hebrew on the wall. So what language is the warning written in? It's written in Hebrew. Let's go and write my answer down. Okay, it's written in Hebrew, which I'm not 100% sure if it's correct. It's uh, the language that you, the um, a lot of Jewish people used to use, um, and it's the language still that is in the Jewish holy text. So um, Hebrew is the language that was used. Ready for one last question? It says... Name one event that the Bayer Tapestry depicts. Depicts means to show. So name one event that the Bayer Tapestry shows. Okay, now that's obviously going to be from our text. So what you need to do is go back to the text, look at the Bayer Tapestry, and tell me one thing that it shows. There's a few different answers, but we only need one. Pause the video there and go and find me one event that the Bayer Tapestry depicts. Okay, right, let's go and have a little look ourselves. So here's the Bayer Tapestry down here. What is one event that it depicts? Now, there's quite a few. So first of all, we could have in the scene below, William's troops board ships that will take them to England. So we could have the troops board the ships. Here, he says, we're carrying supplies to the ships. We could have people carrying supplies to the ships. Um, here it says, I'm William leading my troops to victory. So we could have William leading his troops to victory. And here we could say, um, while there's no actual information, but we could say the um, soldiers sailing on ships. Those are four different events that are depicted in the Bayer Tapestry section that we've been given. So we need at least one of them. So which one should we go for? I'm going to go for, you can have any of those four answers. I'm going to go for um, William leads his army to victory. That's one of the events that is depicted in the extract of the Bayer Tapestry that we've been given. Okay, so now we've predicted, we've read, we've clarified and we've questioned. So the last bit is just the summary, I'm we'll blocking a bit of the summary there. It says, can you summarise your reading today in less than 10 words? 
Can we summarise our reading? So summary is to tell me as much as possible. So I'm going to have a go, and then you're going to have a go as well. So can I summarise it in less than 10 words, or in 10? Um, art can tell stories about real or made-up events. Did it? And made-up is technically hyphenated, so actually that's nine. Art can tell stories about real or made-up events. Perfect. That's going to be my 10-word summary of what I've learned. Art can tell stories about real or made-up events. There we go. Now what I'd like you to do is have a go at writing your own 10-word summary about something that you've learned today in less than 10 words. There we go, guys. It was so much easier doing it this way. So I think we'll keep going doing it like this way. And it's uh, also 20 minutes for a reading session like this is perfect because that's the amount of time you would have in a guided reading session as well. So perfect. Remember, keep stopping the video and rewinding it if you ever need to go back and look at bits. And you can send me all your work at rsa.year6 at 3 saintsorguk Thank you to everyone who's already been sending work in. Join me tomorrow where we're going to carry on with our Wolves in the Walls writing. See you later, guys. Bye.